Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram Talks. In this video, we are going to discuss a lot. Uh, but before doing that, you can check the latest videos about complete basic training for UIPA development as well as there are many codes or many live sessions that I have taken that you can go ahead register and check out. So what exactly are we trying to get in this particular video? So uh, when I started my journey as an RPA developer, I used to think that solution development or uh, when someone asked me what is the solution design that you are going to propose, my idea was uh, plainly on I, I need to design something on RE framework and that itself will give me a solution design. But that's absolutely wrong. Solution design is completely different. RE framework designing a process into RE framework is one part of it, but um, or the way how we implement it. The best part or uh, how exactly do we need to work on solution designing? There are four important points while working with the solution or uh, while working with the solution design or specifically five. Uh, one, to understand the as is process properly. What is the current as is process? See, RPA is something that we are automating the solution that uh, there is, for which there is already a process. We are not reinventing any wheel now. So, whatever the process that we are trying to automate, we need to make sure that all the process is properly understood and all the exceptions are properly understood and whatever solution that we are preparing, uh, we are making sure that changes are not occurring very frequently because once the change occurs like change is always an enemy of RPA <laughs> that's what I feel uh, but again saying that we need to make sure that our bot is resistant enough uh, to work on the solution and also flexible enough to be scaled whenever there is a small change and we need to also understand what is a to be process uh, while checking with the as is process a uh, to be process what exactly to be process is let's assume that we are working on a calculator and after work getting the solution out of calculator there is a place where the data should be written now um, that's an as is process uh, normally manual process would be keyboard and mouse activities or uh, clicks manually uh, to get an result but here is where we need to show that what what exactly can do let's assume that there is an excel file that's ready to mind and now we are implementing or we are including a new file where we are bringing in the data as an input now what reads the data and finally works on the calculator and then so solves or updates the data on the same excel sheet so that's how uh, we are bringing in a bot in between, uh, making sure that there is a structured format of input and there is a structured format of output. And again, um, so first thing as is process and to be process are definitely need to be checked properly and we need to understand as a developers as a solution designers or a business analyst should understand what exactly is an as is process and a to be process the next one is risk and compliance and now uh, when we are when we are working with a bot that too in an unattended mode uh, there is a higher risk uh, if we did not create a bot properly or if we did not give enough access or restricted access to a bot then the data leakage may happen that uh, we always need to make sure that no data will be leaked outside the system or outside the privileges that are given to the bot uh, only enough privileges or necessary privileges are given nothing extra should be given so that even let's assume that there is some misbehavior due to some upgrade that happened in the application and though we have created a bot such that it sends an exception but bot is unable to find or bot is unable to identify the change and it it sent an email uh, that it should never send now that's something that uh, that's something that we should always see and make sure that only a specific level of or um, the privileges are properly given for a bot to work on. The next one would be disaster recovery and resistance. 
what is disaster recovery now i am not talking about anything about uh, natural occurring disaster what i am exactly saying is uh, maybe there is an application that crash or maybe there is an application that's not working according to the requirement or according to the way how the bot is developed now when we are working on such scenarios how is the bot able to pop up back or how the bot is able to restart itself and restart the work so this is very important concept understanding the disaster uh, recovery and as well as recover pla recovery planning for the bot is absolutely important because let's assume that a bot starts and in between there is an exception that triggered maybe it can be a, some exception which normally occurs when there is uh, an application failure or some kind of folder that's not accessible now what what should be the sla now when should the bot restart or when should the bot how many times should the bot retry even before sending an exception so everything comes under disaster recovery and what is the exact sla time frame are we checking with for example a transaction came into the queue now um, when we are saying about transaction it can be anything uh, that the bot need to process let's assume that the normal time frame that requested by the business is 24 hours now uh, within the 24 hours are we able to or is the bot able to reset itself and work on that particular transaction item again or is it in the pending state for the last 24 hours and it, is it going into abandoned state now when it's going into abandoned state are we sending proper email communication or are we sending proper line uh, or do we have proper login mechanism is definitely what we need to see and we need to consider now let's check with the errors and exceptions so when we are talking about errors and exceptions we also need to talk about retry logic um, will the bot be able to resume let's assume that there is an input that's required from a human uh, we are talking about a process where a human comes in between now um, a bot should wait but for how much time should it wait should it wait for five minutes should it wait for 10 minutes everything uh, we need to capture properly and we need to make sure that enough time is given for a human to interact with the bot and again bot takes up the process after having an information from the human what is the retry mechanism that currently we are following uh, when we are able to check even before we start with the code that's where uh, the experience comes into picture are we checking with uh, how many times a bot need to reset itself or how many times a bot need to retry a particular transaction item should it be three times should it be four times should it be five times should it be only once and why is it so so if it is done only once what are the other steps that a bot can take for example a process or a transaction gets started now after starting it had an exception now there is no retry mechanism according to the business uh, rule they said that or they informed that no retry mechanism is required whenever there is an exception just go ahead and log it so that we will take it up as a manual action item then that's one kind of uh, that's one kind of designing solution but again not everything will be designed that only once a bot should work and then it goes to a manual effort that shouldn't be the condition uh, we need to see or uh, the bot should be developed in such a way that whenever there is an exception it try retries uh, once or twice then it sends an exception uh, that should be a retry logic again we already spoke about recovery um, if there is any exception we is the bot able to recover itself and start the transactions again and resume as i have said if there is a human in loop an automation where human is in loop and it requires a human interaction in between how a human is being notified is he being notified with an orchestrator using task or is he being notified with a email now when we are sending an email what is the time frame that a reply is expected 
he, he or uh, the bot cannot wait for a longer time because by that time the transactions are in progress that need to be worked on so everything should be checked while working on it now checking with the logging metrics and logging metrics and mail notifications what exactly is this logging uh, so for each and every process that we are designing logging is very important because that's where we will be able to understand what is the step it's failed or what is the step it was successful what is the step it needs an action to be done or an activity to be performed everything need to be checked uh, everything can be checked using logs how are we maintaining the logs are we maintaining the logs on the system or are we maintaining the logs in the orchestrator see there are different uh, options to maintain the logs again businesses may give very small space to maintain the logs uh, what exactly the business scenarios may be we don't want all the trace items to be taken only the errors that may come up need to be stored in the orchestrator but normal exceptions or anything that's not exceptionally required if it is a well bound process as well as if a bot is well developed then there will be a situation that only a limited space or a limited sql uh, space is provided if there is kibana again where a logs are being stored on the kibana then it's a different process where uh, designing should be done but if we are storing all the logs in the orchestrator then yes definitely we need to see how many logs are being stored because we are not talking about one bot which can store around 10 gb of data we are talking about um, there should be a plan always that whenever there is a new bot can it accommodate with the existing system how exactly are we accommodating multiple machines or multiple robots within a single robot do we have the capacity you know uh, for all the robots to be stored or all the robots to be maintained within the orchestrator so there shouldn't be over usage of the memory or also or also we should we should also see there shouldn't be any under usage of the memory so everything need to be checked and proper metrics should be taken now when i'm talking about metrics what exactly a metric can be for example with respect to business now a business uh, people in the business need not understand the code completely because that's not their work they need to understand how many transactions are being processed what are the manual efforts that are reduced and many transactions are in success how many transactions are in business exception or how many did fail um, now when it fails how many times did it retry and then fail these are the metrics that normally we will see but we also see what is the average handling time of a particular transaction what is the success rate of an of the transactions that we are currently working on though we are saying that manual efforts are very high when compared to robots now when the robot or when the robot is expected to work over a time or when there are multiple robots that are working on a particular process there will always be a comparison between why the other bot is able to do much more faster than this bot what will be the issue so we also need to see what is the average handling time for all these situations uh, we also need to check with the mail notifications what i would suggest is mail notifications are the best way to do or to communicate because it will have a store um, or all the emails will be stored in email boxes uh, one more important way where we can send notifications is using the communication platforms like teams uh, if we are able to integrate apis microsoft office 365 where we can utilize teams and we can send messages directly over teams channel or over slack or anything any platform where a user or a um, or an employee you now we can say a employee who works continuously on a particular or have the access to a particular application if the bot can send directly notification to that maybe there will be the handling time to get uh, to get the exception resolved is much more uh, lesser than sending it to a email and waiting for a reply said so that ui path has a beautiful framework uh, which has all the robust facilities which can retry which can maintain the log which can 
have a trace of all the activities everything that can be done within re framework i suggest you even if you are a developer just a basic developer or a business analyst or a solution architect go ahead and check with re framework because uh, that's one of the base framework that can help you out even if you want to customize an re framework yes you can do that and that can help you out in understanding how you need to maintain the transaction how you need to properly analyze the solution how you need to create transactions in the queue what is the dispatcher process and what is the performer process in the next video we will see what is a dispatcher process and a performer process well uh, there are lot many things to be discussed and lot many ideas to be put forth while designing the solutions again saying solution designing is not only working with the code but the way how you are able to handle when there is an exception how are you maintaining the code how are you um creating or how are you um, how are you making sure that the bot recovers when there is an exception that is triggered so everything will come into a solution design and creating a solution design document is one of the main important factor uh, for the rps success so properly create all the activities or all the items that are required for a solution design document i am planning to create one uh, video on solution design document specifically on solution document i already have i have already created a video uh, giving proper demo on task capture as well as discussing completely on pdd structure what should be mentioned in a pdd and what are the uh, what is the output that is expected from a pdd everything is mentioned we have a link below uh, for checking all the different videos that i am posting as well as with the task capture uh, along with the live videos that i am doing so like share and subscribe bajrang talks and if you have any questions you can write over to my email vajrang@outlook.com or you can post it over my linkedin channel which is uh, vajrang b and you can also communicate with me over my youtube channel which is vajrang bilakutti youtube.com/vajrang bilakutti like share and subscribe vajrang talks have fun bye bye